Those who worship in the outer courtyard will be rejected, and only those who worship within the porch will be accepted. Those who worship towards the direction of Jesus Christ, as the temple of God alone, are accepted. So, the presence or absence of the Al-Aqsa Mosque there is not important, because their worship is rejected as they are outside the sanctuary. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. Revelation 11 to 1. Actually, the construction is more appropriately referred to as the construction of the fourth temple, but perhaps the use of the word three is considered to have more religious significance and is more marketable. From a marketing perspective, sermons about the third temple, advertising a pilgrimage tour to the construction of the third temple of God, would have a more appealing value? Because labeling it as the third will have a more religious impact rather than labeling it as the fourth temple. So, some Christian and Jewish groups prefer to refer to it as the construction of the third holy temple. Why is it more appropriate to call it the construction of the fourth temple? Let's examine this historical record. 1. The first temple was built by King Solomon, also called Solomon's Temple. Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar attacked Jerusalem around 606 BCE and destroyed the temple. The Ark of the Covenant, Aaron Habrit, containing the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments along with the golden pot of manna, and Aaron's staff that budded likely disappeared or was destroyed. Around 586 BCE, the Jews were exiled to Babylon. 2. The construction of the second temple. Zerubbabel's temple was built after the return from exile in Babylon. The construction of the new temple began around 535 BCE and was completed on March 12, 515 BCE. As described in the book of Ezra, the rebuilding of the temple was organized by Cyrus the Great and approved by Darius the Great. The book of Nehemiah reveals the life of the Israelites after their freedom from Babylon heading to the promised land of Canaan. Under Nehemiah's leadership, the Israelites successfully rebuilt their religious and political structures, including the walls surrounding Jerusalem, and held a ceremony to renew the covenant between the people of Israel and the God of Israel. Moreover, King Cyrus the Great also provided funds for rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem. This return and restoration were gradual, interconnected, and purposeful. The temple stood in the midst of the city of Jerusalem, surrounded by the city walls. In 168 BCE, Antiochus Epiphanes desecrated the temple by building an altar to the god Zeus Olympius and offering sacrifices to him. Three years later, Judas Maccabees cleansed and restored it. This event is commemorated as Hanukkah to Maccabees 10 to 5 to 7. And in the New Testament, Jesus is recorded celebrating this festival John 10, 22 to 23. Architecturally, this temple still stood upright when Pompey conquered Jerusalem in 63 BCE and Marcus Licinius Crassus looted its contents in 50 for BCE. 3. The construction of the Third Temple, built by King Herod the Great. When Herod the Great captured the city in 37 BCE, a part of the temple was burned, but the main structure seems to have suffered minimal damage. However, in the 18th year of his reign 20-19 BCE, Herod the Great undertook the reconstruction of the temple construction of the Third Temple before the actual demolition and construction took place. He gathered the necessary materials and carried out the construction gradually to minimize disruption to worship. The work was carried out by the priests. The holy place was completed in one and a half years. 
but the outer building and its porch were finished around the year 62 or 63 CE, when the enemies of Jesus claimed that the temple had been under construction for 46 years. They implied that the construction was still ongoing John to 20. Herod the Great reconstructed the second temple, beginning with a massive expansion on the Temple Mount. Religious worship and rituals at the temple continued during the construction process. After a major Jewish rebellion against Roman rule in the province of Judea, the third temple was destroyed by the Roman army led by General Titus who later became Roman. Emperor following the siege of Jerusalem in 70 CE, the destruction of the temple fulfilled Jesus' prophecy in his Sermon on the Mount of Olives. 4. The envisioned reconstruction of the temple will take place in the future. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty, and two months, revelation at eleven to two. The Islamic control over the site where the temple was once built, and the establishment of the Al-Aqsa Mosque there is not separate from God permission. Both the temple and the city of Jerusalem will be trampled for a period of 42 months. Those who worship in the outer court are those with insincere or hypocritical hearts. Those who worship in the outer court will be rejected, and only those who worship within the sanctuary will be accepted. Those who worship towards the direction of Jesus Christ, as the temple of God alone, are accepted. So, the presence or absence of the Al-Aqsa Mosque there is not important because their worship is rejected as they are outside the sanctuary. Jewish people who practice Judaism are interested in having the temple rebuilt in Jerusalem. Since 70 CE, they have been unable to offer animal sacrifices related to sin removal, atonement, and other rituals. In the miniseries Angels in America 2003, a rabbi in the first episode said, Christianity believes in salvation, Judaism believes in guilt. How could they not be in a state of guilt when they cannot perform proper worship by offering animal sacrifices for the forgiveness of their sins which should be done in the temple in Jerusalem since 70 CE? Regardless of what we think about the possibility of the reconstruction project of the temple in Jerusalem that they aspire to. We must remember that the New Testament Bible emphasizes its great significance in Jesus. Jesus Christ and those who believe in him are the ultimate temple. Consider this verse. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? 1 Corinthians 3.16 the incarnation of God in the person of Jesus Christ, depicted in the concept of he tabernacled among us, is one of the clearest examples of this relationship in the Gospel of John, John 1.14. The most explicit connection to the eschatological temple, described by Ezekiel, can be found in the words of Jesus during the ceremony of priestly consecration on the Feast of Tabernacles. Jesus declared, he that believeth on me. As the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. John 7 38. And he spoke these words at the temple in Jerusalem. The background of the Old Testament scripture mentioned by Jesus is taken from the revelation received by the prophet Ezekiel and written in Ezekiel 47 to 1 to 9. I quote part of it the temple, and behold, water was issuing from below the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the temple faced east. The water was flowing down from below the south end of the threshold of the temple. Note, in another instance, Jesus describes himself as that temple, John to 19. So, the vision seen by the prophet Ezekiel was fulfilled on the day Jesus spoke as written in the Gospel of John 7, 37, 38, that he had already tabernacled among us. Nevertheless, 
We must always remember that the ultimate temple for us is in the person of Jesus Christ and in the life of his entire people, both Jews and non-Jews. Even if, in his second coming, Jesus Christ steps on the Mount of Olives, where he once ascended to heaven, the third or fourth temple has no significance for Christians. The temple in Jerusalem is too small for our Almighty God to only dwell in that building, which is, after all, a perishable place. The power of Christ is eternal, encompassing heaven and earth, and the entire universe. Praise be to God. Amen.